Your phone has over 300 features, but if you're like most people, you're only using a fraction. I've pulled together 30 tips that actually make a difference, from hidden camera tricks to real privacy tools to small tweaks that make your phone feel smoother and smarter. Some are obvious, others are buried deep in the settings, and a few might genuinely surprise you. While this is focused on the Galaxy S25 Ultra, a lot of these tips will work on other Galaxy devices too. Everything is timestamped below if you want to skip around, but I recommend watching through. Some of the best tips are the ones people usually overlook. And if you stick around to the end, there's bonus material all through the video. To begin, let's look at audio playback during video recording. So for this one, open your camera, tap on your little settings gear icon, and then you want to scroll to advanced video. In here, turn on audio playback and you just toggle on audio playback. And we're just going to keep things going with a few more camera settings. So for this one, same thing. Open your camera, tap on your settings icon and then scroll down until you see motion photo options. So you just want to enable capture before and after. So what it does is it captures some frames before, just before you hit the shutter and after you hit the shutter button. So next up we have Cinema Smooth Zooming Video. So this one is pretty easy. I think everybody who has the new Samsung knows how to do this one. So basically open your camera and when you hit record, go to video. And when you hit record, there's now a slider from left to right. So using this slider, you can zoom from a wide angle to up close. And you might be wondering who would want to use this? Well, somebody who's trying to do a nice slow transition zoom or action shot with a nice zoom or like a reveal zoom, different things like that. So sticking to the camera category, our next step involves downloading the raw video. It's an official app from Samsung. So what you're going to do is go over to the Galaxy Store and search for the raw app. I already have this installed, so I'm just going to tap open. What this really does is captures the night stars with impressive detail. I actually shot some when I went down to Jasper. It was really nice. As you can see, you can get some really nice shots if you set these up correctly. And let me know in the comments if you want me to drop those settings as well. Now let's look at the next tip, hiding your camera cutout for specific apps. So go to your settings, display, and camera cutout. So what this does is adds a black bar around the camera for specific apps. And right now it's on automatic. You can choose to show the black bar or you can choose to have just a camera cutout. So this really helps, especially if, if you'd like to see things nice and symmetrical. So moving on, we're gonna explore some security and privacy power features. And the first one is theft protection with movement detection. Sounds like a mouthful. So go to your settings, scroll to security and privacy and tap on theft detection and enable it. What this does is it uses your phone's sensors to detect suspicious movement and then it would just lock automatically. So for example, if someone takes your phone, it goes into lockdown immediately. So another key aspect is remote locked via android.com. That's basically what it means. You're going to just visit android.com forward slash lock from any device, because you can do this from any device, any browser, if you forgot your phone somewhere and you have to factory reset it real quick. This is the fastest way to do it. Three clicks from any browser and your digital life goes on lockdown. So you use this so you can lock your phone immediately when you realize it's missing, factory reset it, you can play a sound, different things like that. If Samsung's Find My Network isn't working, this will work for all Android phones. Now let's look at face recognition, ultra fast mode. At least that's what I call it. So go to your settings.
face recognition, disable stay on lock screen. So what this does is basically recognizing your face and unlocking the phone in under one second. So you can skip that extra confirmation screen. This is gonna give you one second to see it. All right, it's just so fast. Now let's look at some interface and performance hacks. So this one is key apps locked in memory. So pull up your recent apps and tap on the icon at the top. That should give you a quick menu. Now on this quick menu, you just have to tap on keep open and this locks the app in the memory. So even if you clear all apps, these apps will stay open. You can pin up to three apps that always stay open. It's pretty neat. So moving on, I know some of you guys love sports. So this one would be good for you. Sports scores on the lock screen. So for this one, go to your settings and then scroll down to lock screen and AOD. Now here, tap on the nub bar. You should see Google Sports. Now you can tap on that to enable it. And if you wanna select the specific sports, just go ahead and tap on sports from Google. And follow the ones you want to show up in the nub bar. Swipe down anywhere for notifications. So you can access your notifications conveniently with just a swipe down. And that way you don't have to reach all the way to the top of the phone to pull down. You can check your notifications from swiping down anywhere. Moving on, we're looking at lightning fast app switching. I believe majority of users who have this taskbar at the bottom use this feature. And there's also a benefit to this because what it does is app switching speeds increase by 50% when you use this method. So instead of going out of the app and going into a next app, I know everybody knows how to switch this one, but this one speeds up your app switching. And the next step, we're looking at some visual and some customization features. This one is the dynamic flashlight brightness. So how this one works, go to your quick settings and long press on your flashlight. So maybe sometimes you may want your flashlight a little bit brighter or you may want it maybe not as bright. So this is where you would use the slider. So you can go from dim to bright like this. So let's take a look at the next one, color-coded notifications by contact. To enable this, go to settings, scroll down to notifications, and you want to tap notifications pop-up style. Now in here, you see color by word. So when you enter the contact here, it has to be the exact way that that person is saved in your contacts. Does that make sense? Otherwise, this won't work. Then you can select the effect that you want to show when that specific person messages you. You can change, you can change it to any of these or one specifically just for that person. Moving on, we have pop-out chat bubbles. Head on over to your settings, scroll down to notifications, now, you want to tap on advanced settings. Then floating notification. Now, if you tap, now if you select bubbles, your messages will come up as a small bubble and it will stay on the screen. Or you can do a smart pop-up preview and you can select which app you want to use it with. So on to the next one. Let's look at granular notification categories. So go to your settings, tap on notifications, and then you wanna tap on advanced settings. Then you scroll down. In here, turn on manage notification categories for each app. So what this does is filter notification types for each app. 
So this one is Edge Panel Split Screen Launch. I don't have it turned on right now, so let me just turn it on real quick. And basically, this is just another way to launch two apps really quickly. So if you have, once you have your Edge Panel enabled, just press and hold on the app that you want to split screen, and then it'll just go straight into split screen. Really helpful if you want to use two apps at the same time and you want to launch them quickly. You can use the Edge Panel for that. Pretty cool, right? Let's keep it going. Customizable side button, double press. So for this one, go to your settings and then you want to tap on advanced settings and then side button. So in here, so in here is where you select which app you want to use when you double press. For me, I have, um, for me, I have my wallet but you can select whichever app you want to use for the double press. Coming up next, smart screen, stay on detection. So head over to your settings and scroll down to advanced features. Now you want to tap on motion and gestures. So in here at the bottom, because it's not selected, you're going to tap on keep screen on while viewing. So you can watch a video or read a long article without having to tap on the screen to keep it awake. So bonus tip, did you know that you can add two messengers to one device, like two WhatsApp or two Telegram messengers? It's super easy. So go to your settings, scroll down to advanced features, advanced features, and in here, you just wanna tap on dual messenger and you can select which one of these you wanna choose as your dual messenger. For instance, I can just select WhatsApp and you can also use a separate contact lists for this other WhatsApp messenger. So next up, let's look at Gemini voice customization. So just open the Gemini app and you're gonna look for settings on your profile picture. So just tap on your profile picture in the top right hand corner, and then you're gonna tap on settings. And inside settings, it's it's right here. Just tap on Gemini voice, Gemini's voice, and swipe through to one that you like. I think I'm using Pegasus right now, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Next, we'll dive into the No Brief Daily Summary. This widget should be on your home screen by default, but if it's not, just long press on your home screen, tap on widgets right there, and you should see the No Brief widget. So just tap on add. I can put mine right over here. I've grown to like the No Brief. It gives you a summary throughout the day, suggestions on relaxing music and the weather. It seems as though the more the phone learns your behavior, it gives you more suggestions. You can turn off and on some of the apps that you don't want suggested in the null brief. Another good feature is full QHD resolution unlock. So go to your settings, tap on display, and then scroll down to screen resolution. So just for battery purposes, I keep mine on FHD. Um, I do do QHD sometimes because I like to see the buttery smoothness, but it's not necessarily a huge difference. So just to preserve my battery, I usually go with FHD. Dynamic lock screen, auto change. So go to your settings, tap on wallpapers, then you can tap on change wallpapers. Uh, next, you're just gonna scroll down until you see wallpaper services. So. This is where you can select your dynamic lock screen. And what this does is your lock screen becomes an ever-changing gallery. So you can enjoy something fresh on your screen every time you check your phone. Moving on, we have advanced eye comfort scheduling. So head over to your settings, tap on display, and then you wanna tap on eye comfort shield. So in here, just tap on custom, and then you can select when you want it to start and when you want it to end. So this allows you to control media without fully waking up your phone. So next up, we have personal lock screen photo rotation. So go to your settings, scroll down to wallpaper and style, and then tap on your wallpaper. 
And here is where you get a preview of what your wallpaper looks like. But tap on wallpaper is in the top left corner. And then, and then you're gonna tap on each wallpaper that you want to have as your lock screen. I'm just gonna select a few and tap done. Now each time you unlock your device, one of the photos that you selected as a wallpaper will show up. Pretty neat. Now, isn't that cool? I can have a different wallpaper every time I open my phone. Yay! Advanced always on display scheduling. So first you wanna to go to your settings, and then you wanna scroll down to lock screen and AOD. Now in here, just tap on always on display and scroll down right here till you see when to show. So you can tap on when to show, and then you can just tap on as a schedule and then schedule the time that you want always on to be on. And this could be useful if you just want your always on to show at a particular time, or you may not want it on all the time to preserve your battery life. And with this feature, you can just schedule when you want it to be on. Our next tip is handy if you just want to launch two apps at the same time without having to go through the multi-window. So you would actually launch the multi-window with the two apps already launched. So it's quite simple. Go ahead and put the two apps that you want to have in the multi-window. In this example, I'm just using Gemini and my notes. and. To make these open together, you're just gonna tap the three dots in the middle and just hit the plus star. Now you just add it to home screen or you can add it to your edge panel. Now, when you minimize this, it'll just be on your home screen. Then you can just launch them together. So go ahead and open your settings. You want to scroll down and tap on security and privacy. Then you're going to tap on lock screen and put your password in. Now you want to tap on fingerprints. This is where you would add another fingerprint. As you can see, I have three fingerprints added at the moment. So you're going to go ahead and add, tap the plus sign to add another fingerprint. Follow the steps to add a new fingerprint. And what this does is it makes the phone recognize your finger a lot faster by adding more. So your phone should unlock something like this. Now let's customize what we can see in the now brief. So tap on your now brief and you're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom of the page. And you're just gonna tap this settings icon. Now you're gonna tap content to include and basically, as the phone learns your patterns, it's going to include each piece of content that you select into the no brief. Ooh, so that was 30. Hopefully a few of these tips made you pause and think, wait, I didn't know my phone can do that. I try to include a mix of practical, surprising, genuinely helpful things, not just gimmicks. So let me know in the comments which tip was your favorite or just if there's one you think I should have included. And if this helped you in any way, make sure to like and subscribe or share this with someone who just got a galaxy and they have no clue what it can do yet. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.